Snakebite, What Would Samuel Do? by Drs James Wright, Laura Smith, Laura Castle from Broome Regional Hospital in Western Australia. We are three English doctors who, not surprisingly, have never encountered a snake bite back in the UK. Working in Broome ED, we have all been exposed to snake bites and there are quite a few stick bites as well. We are hoping this presentation will help medical staff, both those new to Australia and natives, in a structured approach to diagnosing, investigating and managing a snake bite in the ED. First, we will give a few facts on the venomous states of Australia. The top table shows there are many venomous creatures living here in Australia, but snakes are clearly the most dangerous. Current estimates suggest that there are approximately 3,000 snake bites annually in Australia, and anti-venom is required in 100 to 200 cases. There are one to four deaths occurring annually, mostly from brown snakes. Since 1980, there have been 58 recorded fatalities from a snake bite. Around half of all deaths from snake bites are caused by brown snakes. The lower table shows the sex, age, and the of the 58 people who died since 1980. Literature states that snake bites are more common in the rural and tropical areas of Australia, as depicted, with the most prevalent area being northern Queensland. Since 1980, there have been two deaths in the Broome region due to snake bites, one due to a brown snake and one due to a death adder. The next three slides show Australia's 10 most deadly snakes. In the top right is the western brown, which is implicated in most snake bite fatalities in Australia. The most toxic snake venom in the world, identified by testing on mice in the LD50 trial, is the inland taipan. The coastal taipan is recorded as having the longest fang fangs of the 10 snakes at 13 millimetres. Australia's most venomous snake in terms of yield is the king brown or mulga, providing up to 150 milligrams per envenomation. Studies over the past 27 years have shown that the most common cause for snake bite is by treading on the snake. Identifying puncture marks is not as easy as you may think. It can range from two puncture marks, a single mark, a scratch or nothing at all. In 20% of snake bites, envenomation occurs with release of venom into the body. An important feature of assessment, therefore, is geography, knowing the venomous snakes of your area well. So what would happen to Brittany if she was envenomated by an Australian snake? Typical symptoms, beginning with Forest Whitaker, are ptosis, which can be the start of progressive descending symmetrical paralysis, convulsions and myotoxicity, sweating, blurred vision, tachycardia and hypotension, coagulopathies and renal failure, respiratory failure, petechiae or ecchymosis, and pyrexia. Coagulopathy. The single most important and major effect of envenoming is venom-induced consumption coagulopathy, or VIC. It is due to prothrombin activators contained in the snake's venom, causing consumption of fibrinogen. Complete VIC is where all the fibrinogen is consumed, Partial VIC is where fibrinogen is low but still detectable. Pressure immobilisation bandage should be applied as early as possible, ideally within 30 minutes to prevent effects of envenomation. The compression bandage needs to be applied to the entire limb, followed by immobilisation. The bandage should be as tight as a typical sprained ankle bandage would be and works under the principle that venom spreads throughout the body's lymphatic system, therefore the compression reduces lymphatic drainage. Blood tests should be taken at 0, 1, 6 and 12 hours post by injury. It is essential to investigate coagulation profiles including INR, APTT, fibrinogen and D-dimer levels. If you are in a rural hospital, this would be an occasion to call the on-call toxicologist for advice or consult local protocols. The patient should be strictly monitored with regular neurological observations documented on specific snake bite charts. Wherever possible, a swab of the puncture wound and a urine sample should be taken and stored until envenomation has been proven and further testing is needed. The Snake Venom Detection Kit, or VDK, is designed only to confirm which of the major snake groups is responsible, therefore determining which antivenom should be used. It should not be used in non-envenomated patients because of a high false positive rate, especially for the brown snake. The VDK does not confirm nor exclude envenoming and the VDK is best done by laboratory staff, ideally using the bite site swab as the urine has a higher false positive rate. Antivenom should only be given once envenomation has been proven. Antivenom selection depends on three factors, geography, clinical and laboratory findings. Antivenom should only be administered in a designated resource area due to the high risk of anaphylaxis. 
Usually one ampule is sufficient despite patient size and repeated dosing is of no extra benefit. It is recommended to dilute the ampule into 500 mL of normal saline and give over 20 minutes. However, in an arrest scenario, it can be given as a push. Monovalent antivenin is superior to polyvalent due to the lower risk of anaphylaxis, 1% versus 5%. Polyvalent should only be administered if the patient is too sick to wait for the VDK result or if the monovalent is not available. Antivenin has little to do with the return of fibrinogen to the coagulation pathway. That is dependent on the body's liver function and should be expected to take longer than 8 hours post-administration of the antivenin. So if not envenomated, climb the ladder by removing the pressure immobilisation bandage, take serial blood tests to ensure no evolving envenomation and keep the patient for 12 hours. If envenomed, go down the snake and administer the appropriate antivenin, then remove the PIB. Carry out serial bloods to ensure patient recovery and control the patient symptoms. Now aspirates know what to do with a snake bite. These are the don'ts. Do not carry out a VDK test until proven envenomation. Do not discharge a patient home at night. Do not encourage the public to attempt identification of the snake post-bite. Do not attempt to wash the wound or suck out the venom. Do not underestimate how dangerous Australia snakes are. So, looking after a snake bite should be a piece of cake. The do's are, immediately apply a pressure immobilisation bandage. Take baseline blood tests. Take a swab of the bite site in a urine sample. Prove or disprove envenomation. If envenomated, administer appropriate antivenom. Continue to observe for 12 hours and complete serial blood tests.